Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Billboards, A Hazard to Driver, driver Safety, a Human Factors Perspective. Over the past 10 years, there have been many significant changes in the driver-vehicle environment relationship that have resulted in a 9% reduction in vehicle crashes, but a 20% increase in crashes involving driver distraction on U.S. highways. As roads have generally become safer, more vehicles than ever travel on U.S. highways. Today's vehicles have become more complex with the introduction of new technology that has improved safety but also made it more difficult for drivers to maintain control of their vehicles. Drivers are also challenged more than ever with the availability of smartphones, lightweight laptops, book readers, video displays, GPS systems, radar detectors, graphic displays. In addition, there are ex external distractions such as billboards of many different sizes and configurations, some using new technology that bombard drivers with ads and information. When crashes do occur, how can a human factors expert assist you with identifying how an external distraction such as a billboard uh, contributes to the collision? What errors have occurred and who is responsible for the decisions that resulted in those errors. This webinar will help to remove some confusion about billboards, clarify what is really occurring on U.S. highways, and explain the possible effects these changes may have for attorneys who try to sort it all out. During this program, our presenter will cover the following, the three categories and types of driver distractions, the truth about multitasking, the evolution of billboards, how billboards compare to other types of driver distraction, unique features of billboards as a driver distraction, the unintended consequences of new technology, human factors elements of driver distraction and billboards, the roles of government and industry in regulating billboards. The presenter for today's program is William Nelson. William has over 30 years of experience in ergonomics, biomechanics, and human factors principles. William's expertise and areas of specialization include product liability, personal injury, premises liability, and accident reconstruction. He has been directly involved with the commercialization of emerging technologies such as lasers, acoustic reflectometry, and electronics. Of special interest to Mr. Nelson are the unintended consequences from the use of emerging technology in today's multicultural society. Of particular interest is the emerging research in the area of driver distraction, sports injuries, medical errors, and how to prevent injuries. Mr. Nelson has been a presenter at national and international conferences. He has over 18 years of litigation support experience as an expert witness throughout the U.S. in municipal, state, and federal court, as well as experience with the Daubert hearing process. During today's presentation, we will take two question and answer breaks. If you have a question, please use the chat or Q&A feature located on the right-hand side of the screen to submit your questions to the presenter. We encourage all attendees to submit questions throughout the presentation. Tomorrow morning, I will send out an email with a link to the archive recording of this webinar, and we do take, ask that you take time to fill out the survey that will appear on your screen after the webinar is over. I'm now going to turn our program over to our distinguished presenter, William Nelson. Will, the program is all yours. Thank you, Matt. I uh, appreciate the opportunity, and um, I would also like to welcome everyone and uh, appreciate your time and taking uh, time from your busy schedule to uh, learn a little bit more about human factors and driver distraction, and in specific today talking about uh, billboards and how that fits into the overall picture. Um, Previous to this presentation, uh, a couple months ago or so, uh, did a presentation on driver distraction. And while uh, that presentation is not necessary for today, it does provide a little bit more detail. And so today we'll be talking a little bit uh, more uh, kind of a summary of driver distraction and then more information about billboards in specific. Um, I'd like to uh, mention that just uh, kind of from an overview standpoint that, um, uh, you know, we, we do not really take a position one way or the other on billboards of whether they are safe, unsafe, safe, 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 uh, that each situation requires an analysis and looking at 
what caused a collision on the highway and what uh, factors, both internal and external, to the uh, driver and the vehicle and vehicles around them uh, play uh, a part into that collision. And so uh, as we go through the presentation today, in some situations uh, we'll be raising questions and may not necessarily provide specific answers, but more general information about billboards and how it fits into the overall picture. Uh, just a note of disclaimer, we do not represent a, a, any billboard companies and we don't represent uh, any uh, organizations that are uh, challenging billboards uh, in the uh, marketplace either. So uh, we are an independent uh, consulting firm, worked for about 15 years with Matt and his organization. Uh, and hope that uh, today's uh, uh, session will be informative to you. Um, generally, uh, Mark uh, Heidebrecht and myself, we both handle uh, human factors, uh, ergonomics, and biomechanics. Mark is out of town today, uh, and consequently I'll be giving the presentation. Um, uh, I uh, have with me a glass of water, so if I take a, a short break just to make sure my uh, voice will last for the entire hour, uh, you'll uh, understand why. Let's go into just a little bit of background here on the significance of uh, driver distraction. Uh, and I won't go through uh, infinite detail, but basically 20% of crashes involve driver distraction of some type or another, uh, not specific to billboards. Uh, cell phone use crashes every 26 seconds. There's uh, almost 6,000 annual deaths related to it, 500,000 plus uh, injuries. 16% of overall motor vehicle fatality is 21% of injury crashes, and it's essentially equivalent to 0 0.08 uh, blood alcohol level. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration believes these statistics are only the tip of the iceberg, uh, and yet, as you can already see, they're very significant when it comes to driver distraction. So what is driver distraction? It's any non-driving activity a person engages in that has the potential to distract from the primary task of driving. Um, primary task, obviously, is to control the vehicle, and anything that will uh, distract the driver would be considered a driver distraction. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these uh, also, um, and I'm sure each of you, uh, in the course of your driving over the last uh, years, uh, is uh, familiar with each of these. Uh, the last one on the list on the right-hand column, billboards, is what we'll be talking about uh, today. You know, um, no matter the distraction, drivers who are distracted exhibit the same basic type of behavior, and those are that um, you either uh, fail to detect the hazard, you know, whether it's a pedestrian, a bicycle, or something in the road itself. Uh, it also results in reacting more slowly to those events. For example, a car stopping to make a left turn or pulling out from the side road that you uh, may not, uh, you may uh, see it, but not necessarily take action. And decrease the margin of safety, for example, turning left in front of oncoming traffic uh, while you're being distracted. In essence, it's Driver distraction decreases your margin of safety, leading to risk that drivers may not otherwise take. So what type of uh, categories of driver distraction are there? There's uh, internal to the driver, and those include such things as, you know, fatigue, medication, illness, alcohol, uh, things that really are uh, more physiological in some ways. Uh, then you have external to the driver, but internal to the vehicle. And these cover the, the classic, you know, cell phone use, adjusting the vehicle controls, um, talking with a passenger, reading, grooming, singing, uh, anything to do with the dashboard that uh, is taking your eyes off the road. And then external to the vehicle would be uh, the bicycles, pedestrians, uh, scenic vistas, roadside businesses, advertisements, and billboards. Uh, again, the last item on there is what we're going to be talking about today. Types of distraction, there's three main types. The visual, such as looking at text or a keyboard, GPS device, a sign, or a billboard. The physical, taking your hands off the wheel, such as when you're uh, typing uh, a text or eating or drinking. 
and then cognitively taking your mind off what you're doing, which is operating a vehicle. Uh, and that's using the hands-free cell phone, reading, a, uh, having a conversation, or even uh, reading the billboard and uh, interpreting the information on that billboard itself. So let's take a, a closer look at driver distraction, what the research suggests that uh, eye gaze is reflectively drawn to an object of different luminance in the visual field. 23% uh, of all crashes and near crashes caused by external distraction. External distractions cause longer duration of continuous inattention than in vehicle distractions. Um, roadside digital billboards cause significantly longer glance duration than on-premise digital signs and static billboards. Let's look at the, uh, briefly, the four steps of information processing. Uh, and, uh, again, this may be familiar with you, um, so we'll go into a, a detail here. But uh, it starts with detection. That's when a hazard enters the driver's field of view and ends when the driver has become consciously aware that something is present. Leads to identification, which involves gathering information about the object until the driver can make an appropriate decision as what it is, whether it poses a threat, and whether its existence calls for some responsive action. This leads then to the decision. This step is with the identification process complete. complete uh, the driver must make a choice as to the appropriate action to take to avoid the object or condition. Typically, the choices involve changing speed or direction, or possibly no action at all. And then obviously the reaction or response by the driver, initiated when the brain sends a signal to the necessary muscle groups to carry out the intended action. The perception reaction response ends when the uh, either the foot lands on the brake pedal or the hands begin to turn the steering wheel, whatever action is taken by the driver as a result of the process they go through. Um, Touch on uh, multitasking. Uh, we're all familiar with that in our office. Uh, I, I, just about daily, I have somebody come into my office and say, hey, can you multitask, meaning can you continue to do what you're doing but listen to me at the same time, uh, and then possibly uh, carrying on two different, three different conversations. The truth is that people cannot actually multitask. The way that the brain works is it handles tasks sequentially. But the brain can juggle tasks very rapidly, which gives the impression of multitasking. Um, but the brains have limited processing uh, uh, capacity. And so the attention switching that takes place in the brain results in slower response and reaction time. And this is true whether it's in your office or whether you're in the car, whatever the situation is when you're trying to listen to the radio, eat, uh, shift the, the car, uh, talk to passengers and at the same time control the vehicle and, and what's going on outside of the vehicle itself. All of these are taking away uh, processing time uh, from the from the driver and uh, uh, possibly affecting their safety while they're in the process of uh, uh, processing that information. So external distractions. When you think about it, uh, things that are Internal to the person, meaning fatigue or taking medicines, um, all the things that are internal, as we talked about earlier from a physiological standpoint, almost all of those or all of those are controlled by the driver. Uh, when it comes to things that are internal to the vehicle, again, when you're talking about cell phone use, talking to passengers, listen, listening to the radio, um, eating, all the things that can take place within the vehicle. Again, when you think about it, each one of those items is controlled by the driver. They decide on those distractions and whether to uh, answer the phone, whether to respond to a text. Uh, all of those are situations that are directly controlled by the driver. Now, when you get involved with external distractions, when you're talking about uh, uh, signs and billboards and other types of activities taking place external to the vehicle, I raise the question, 
Who's responsible for external distractions designed to draw the driver's tension away? We'll talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about the purpose of billboards. And uh, when you really get down to it, the, the function of a billboard is to distract the driver to get them to look at the billboard, because obviously if they don't look at the billboard, they're not going to go through the information processing uh, and hopefully, based off the information on the billboard, take action, either to uh, buy something, stop at a hotel if it's information about uh, lodging, or uh, whatever the, uh, uh, the information that is displayed on the billboard. The purpose is to draw your attention to that billboard. And so when you look at who the stakeholders that are involved in that billboard, you have advertisers, you have the billboard companies themselves, Advertising agencies are involved in the process, the landowners, the building owners, if the uh, billboard is uh, mounted to a building. Um, and so uh, it's actually it's a very uh, complex uh, process of uh, all the different stakeholders working together that makes that billboard take place and is uh, created out in the environment on the roadside. Let's look just briefly. This is uh, information from either the uh, Outdoor Advertising Association of America or other uh, studies that have looked at billboards. Estimated that there's 400,000 billboard faces in the United States. It reaches approximately 93% of the uh, American population. Over the past 30 years, the number of cars has increased 53%. Americans spend approximately 15 hours per week in their car. Uh, and the outdoor advertising uh, group uh, spends you know, six to seven billion dollars uh, on advertising. Uh, billboards themselves account for about 62 percent of outdoor advertisements. Uh, the rest could be involved with um, bus and transit systems, street furniture, and other types of uh, outdoor advertising. But again, we're focusing today uh, looking at billboards. We'll go into detail on this, but just to show that uh, according to the uh, research that about 5% of the ad spend is on um, billboards or outdoor advertising, uh, but when you look at the time spent per week, uh, it's about 27%. And so consequently, outdoor advertising from a uh, cost-effectiveness standpoint is very high. Uh, the cost for outdoor advertising is uh, about 80% less than a TV ad, 60% less than newspaper ads, 50% less than radio ads. So it's a very effective way to advertise to uh, reach uh, those who are driving. Uh, the evolution of the billboards, uh, the um, research indicates that going all the way back to 1867 uh, was the earliest known billboard rental became popular in the United States in the uh, mid-1900s with mail pouch, tobacco, Burma shave, wool drugs. I remember all of those uh, growing up. Now, uh, obviously, uh, digital billboards are becoming uh, popular in outdoor advertising, and technology is enabling advertisers to explore new techniques to attract the attention of the consumer. Uh, some examples, and we'll uh, talk about more of these later, but they have uh, scented billboards that emit odors similar to charcoal and black pepper to suggest a steak grilling. Um, this was uh, erected in uh, North Carolina by a grocery store chain uh, to uh, encourage the sale of beef. There's been quite an evolution over the last um, 100 years. Just a little bit on the consumer influence. 70% of people report they glance at billboards as they pass. 63% of these actually read the billboards. 29% of people reported visiting a retail store within a week after seeing a billboard, uh, as well as billboards are viewable 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, when you think of the changes that have taken place over the last decade with uh, people being able to uh, skip TV ads uh, using their DVR, uh, TiVo and uh, using um, the internet to watch TV programs and skip over ads. It's no wonder that the uh, the 
increase in use of outdoor advertising because as you drive down the highway, you really have no uh, control over being able to uh, delete or uh, bypass an ad that uh, is in your field of view. Um, so consequently, uh, the uh, attention that is given to outdoor uh, advertising has increased over the last 10, 15 years. Research has found that outdoor advertising attracts attention regardless of whether the displayed message is of interest or relevance to the driver or not. Uh, drivers uh, do not and cannot ignore irrelevant stimulation even during the performance of a high priority task. So drivers involved in crashes as a result of their inattention or distraction are unlikely uh, to willingly report their pre-crash behavior to an investigating officer due to concerns about legal liability, insurance, surcharges, or points on their driver's license. Uh, when you look at, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but when you start looking at uh, government regulations, when you start looking at uh, data, uh, one of the reasons that the amount of data is uh, so little is from the standpoint that when you look at the uh, uniform uh, traffic uh, collision reports, um, some of them do not even include driver distraction, but those that do just have a mark on the uh, report for driver distraction but do not necessarily give any information about what that driver distraction is. So it, in some cases, it's very difficult to get detailed quantitative information about what was the specific driver distraction that was involved in uh, the uh, collision. Okay, let's just take a quick short break here to see if there's any questions about driver distraction overall and just kind of billboards overall. Excellent. Thanks, Will. Uh, we do have a couple questions that have come in uh, to the queue, and I would encourage all the attendees to please use the uh, Q&A or chat feature on the right-hand side of the screen to, uh, to submit your questions. Will, why haven't billboards been giving as much national attention as uh, texting or cell phone use? I think uh, part of that uh, is from the standpoint that uh, billboards have been around, as I mentioned, for uh, many, many years and you know, started with small size uh, ads and then uh, have increased in size over the years uh, to today where you have the uh, digital displays. So it's been more of an evolutionary process that uh, drivers have grown up with when you Take the uh, texting and smartphones, uh, which has been more of a uh, disruptive technology that's been introduced into the vehicle. It's, it's much easier to uh, look at the uh, drastic effect that those technologies have had, uh, especially with teen drivers, uh, over a shorter period of time rather than the evolutionary process that uh, has been encountered with um, billboards. Um, so it's also just uh, harder to uh, monitor and uh, research when you're talking about the sheer number of billboards that are out there and the uh, variability of location of the billboards versus uh, the research that can be done with a driver in a simulation uh, in a, uh, with a computer, uh, and you can monitor and exactly uh, measure the effect that texting or, or um, cell phone use has within a car. Okay, great. Thank you, Will. We do have a question here um, from Nick who asks, uh, what is the source of data reporting 70% of people glance at billboards and 63% read and 29% uh, visited the business? I guess what are the sources of uh, the stats that you're using? Uh, a lot of it's just a variety of research that's been done, some of it from the Outdoor Advertising Association, uh, some of it from studies that um, have been done, uh, independent studies looking at um, billboards and the effects of it, some from Nielsen Media Research, uh, looking at uh, media spending, so just a wide variety. Uh, we've got all the different research sources, if somebody would be interested in the very specific ones that deal with that. 
Excellent. We have a question here from Charles who asks, um, in your research, have you come across any data on uh, adult content billboards versus other messages? Adult content? Yes. Uh, I myself have not done any research in that area. Uh, that would be an interesting one to look into as far as uh, the type of ad and um, a specific uh, distraction and who would get distracted for that type of an ad. Okay, great. And uh, we have a question here from uh, Charlene who asked, and this, this may be part of the second uh, part of the presentation, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask it anyway. Um, do people read digital signs more often than static signs, and are there any statistics on uh, the, differenti the difference between the two? Uh, yes, and, and again, it depends on the specific situation, but in general, because of the newness of uh, digital ads and, and some of the um, uh, ways that those have been implemented, and it's been uh, you know learning curve for the outdoor advertising uh, group also. Uh, you know initially those ads were uh, put up in a short period of time, and then they would change to a new uh, screen. And obviously every time you change the screen, you get a uh, change in the lighting. It has an effect from a visual visual standpoint. It grabs your attention. Uh, every time, uh, in, in looking at from a human factor standpoint, that there's been innovation in advertising, outdoor advertising, whether it's, uh, you know, billboards or whether it's in an airports, things like that, that's new and different. Uh, it captures your eye, gets your attention. Uh, people have a tendency over time to adapt and adjust to it. Uh, so the initial, uh, research that uh, we're familiar with indicates that they, uh, digital billboards do capture your attention better than um, just a static billboard. Okay, excellent. And uh, last question here comes from Kristen who asks, and uh, you may or may not know this. Do you, have, do you know of any case law which deals with uh, the si size of a sign that makes an outdoor sign a billboard? When does a sign become a billboard? Uh, you know, I do not know specifically on that. Um, that that's the, really it's kind of outside of our area from a human factor standpoint, looking at the uh, effect of it. Um, I can look into that, though, and uh, see what I can come up with. If, um, is it Kristen? Uh, yeah, I can, I can uh, forward you the, the contact information. Okay. If uh, she – is that – he or she, if uh, they would like to have a follow-up on that, I'd be glad to research that. Excellent. Um, I don't see any other questions in the queue, so why don't we move on with the presentation of content, Will? Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so what is the impact? Um, extended episodes, two seconds or longer, in which the driver's eyes are not attending to the driving task, greatly increases the likelihood of a crash. We have some research that indicates roughly 3.7 times. Other research suggests the upper limits for an acceptable distraction episode fall in the range of 0.75 to 1.6 seconds. Uh, and there's growing evidence that billboards can attract and hold a driver's attention for extended periods of time uh, that we know from a human factor standpoint that can be uh, unsafe. Now, granted, there's a huge, huge variety in the uh, messaging that is on the billboards and who that it distracts and how long it distracts them. And we'll go through a little bit of those here in a minute. Um, in some cases, uh, billboards uh, that are designed and are so complex and so many words and small font that uh, actually it's uh, you, you're driven by the billboard before you can really even understand what the billboard is about or the distance that the billboard is off the highway makes it very difficult, and consequently uh, some of those just really uh, you may glance at, but you, it doesn't really distract you uh, to the point that you really read it. Uh, the most effective ones tend to be the shorter ones, uh, have larger fonts, and get your point across very quickly uh, rather than distracting yourself for long periods of time. And, and obviously from a safety standpoint, uh, that would be good too.
Okay, so billboards and human facts are some of the items that I wanted to point out has to do with uh, the first one there, uh, conspicuity. Uh, and this is the ability of a stimulus to stand out from its background. And when you look at it from uh, a traffic engineering standpoint, you know, you want your signs, your signals, markings uh, to be sufficiently conspicuous so that they stand out day or night in all weather conditions. And so, you know, these are done with uh, stop uh, lights, uh, signal lights with uh, black frames around them. Uh, you obviously have, you know, reflective markings on the pavement. You have uh, road signs that are reflective, uh, very simple fonts, easy to read. Uh, so all those types of things uh, are designed for uh, the driver to be able to very quickly pick up the information, understand the information, go through the process and that we talked about earlier, and make a decision of whether it's to go straight ahead, exit, coming up, uh, pass, whatever the action may be. Well, when you have uh, billboards that uh, uh, stand out from the background, they can distract you from the primary purpose of the road information and draw your eyes away because the billboard is more conspicuous than the road uh, traffic control device. Novelty is another, uh, as we all know in the world of advertising, uh, they're constantly looking for novel ways, new ideas, ways to grab your attention, whether it's on TV, radio, uh, and billboards are no different. So, uh, you know, novel stimulus uh, that is new and different will capture your attention and lead to response merely because of the novelty of the idea. Uh, you know, digital billboards you can think of uh, as uh, an idea along those lines as we've talked about. The uh, second column towards the end, the moth effect, uh, that causes drivers to not only look in the direction of a bright light source on the side of a road, but can cause them to inadvertently to steer in that direction as well. Uh, and so uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit here of a, an example of how the moth effect can come into play as a driver on in a, what looks like it could be just a... Um, Nothing unusual happening, but based off of the way that the billboards are placed and the um, type of billboards that they are of how it can uh, lead to the moth effect. And then lastly, the traffic safety factors. Uh, you know, every billboard, road, driver is different, uh, bringing a num number of variables to a scenario that can greatly affect the outcome. As we talked about earlier, it's a very complex situation depending on even the time of the day. Uh, whether it's cloudy, whether it's sunny, uh, rush hour traffic, all of those types of factors can come into play relative to the, uh, the ability of a billboard to distract the driver and the effect that that can have uh, from a collision. Just wanted to show this slide. just gives an example of, uh, it looks like it's a uh, new Ford uh, ad in proximity to uh, signing for an airport indicating where the terminals are. And so as you're coming down the highway, i use the marker, as you're coming down the highway, uh, you have these signs, the terminals and uh, directions here. Uh, and then right adjacent to it, here you have this huge uh, outdoor sign uh, distracting your attention away from the primary purpose here. So this is an example of showing proximity to roadway features and how it can interfere with the simple signing that is designed here for ease of use, ease of understanding, ease of making decisions uh, to an ad here that has a few words that are uh, much smaller, but also a lot going on in the ad, even if there's not a lot of text. This is another uh, just uh, example of a billboard that, you know, life comes at you fast. Well, obviously, if you're going uh, 60, 70 miles an hour and you come across this billboard, uh, things can go uh, very fast while you're trying to understand what the billboard is about and what all the markings are, what's been crossed out, uh, why is it that Florida is not crossed out but looks like it's added in. Then you have, you know, nationwide is on your side. You have nationwide symbol which uh, uh very small font at the bottom. Then you have Ohio State. 
Then you have nationwide.com forward slash OSU. There's a lot going on on this billboard, even though at first glance, life comes at you fast, very easy to read, quick to read, simple font. But to really understand this type of billboard can take seconds, more seconds than uh, you may have time uh, to understand this billboard before you crash into somebody around you. This is an example of a message that uh, is just hard to even understand what it's about. And so even though there are a few words, drive and good, available, steamcrow.com, by the time you sit there and really try to process of what it is that the ad is about, uh, with these figures here, uh, again, it, it looks simple on the surface, but it really can be very complicated from a, a processing standpoint, understanding what the billboard is about. This is an example of what's called the uh, Zagarnik effect. And that phenomenon uh, occurs when tasks have been initiated by humans but interrupted before they could be completed, lead to a feeling of anxiety and desire to complete the task. And what you have here is it's a series of billboards. Uh, and this is, uh, for those who are not in the, the Midwest, this is for the University of Missouri, commonly called Mizzou. And it's a series of billboards, one after another, that spells out M-I-Z-Z-O-U. And each one has a different uh, statement on it. This one says, we, we are Mizzou, and then it trails on back. And uh, this is the use of re repetition uh, and getting your attention to, draw to each one of these billboards to complete exactly what it is that they all say at the end. Uh, and so uh, while you can tell from the picture here that it's out in the, the countryside, it still could take uh, quite a bit of time for you to process that information. And if something occurs on that highway, obviously uh, you could be in a situation that uh, could be hazardous to your health. Another example going the other direction with Old West, just repeating uh, each one having a different topic. This one is Speed Pass with Coffee. That one's about uh, T-shirts. Next one's about parking. Uh, and so each one uh, kind of builds on the previous one and to get your attention. This is the uh, one I was going to mention about how it can look like it is not anything significant, just has pictures of these people here. The billboards were placed close enough uh, from each other so that when a car was traveling past them at about 60 miles an hour, the effect would result in a flash of the images with the final billboard reading way down here. Uh, it says, don't let your life flash before you. And then the last one says, slow down. Uh, so here you have a uh, situation where it's basically trying to inform you through the use of uh, billboards or outdoor advertising about safety and about slowing down, but in the process of doing that, it's distracted you over a long period of time here, as well as because it's on the left-hand side of the road, it could lead to the moth effect that you slowly start to steer and you could cross the center line. Uh, so that shows kind of uh, how something that could be uh, – thought of initially as something positive could, depending on the situation, end up in a negative. And here we have uh, an example of brightness and glare. Uh, from this entire scene overlooking the bay, the one thing that stands out is this uh, digital billboard that is so bright that from, uh, I think this was taken about six miles away at 8 o'clock in the morning. You can still see that billboard, uh, how bright it is. Obviously, this is uh, an example in uh, a lot of major metropolitan areas where uh, you just have a lot of billboards, a lot of uh, outdoor advertising taking place, uh, overlapping, uh, some up high, some down low, repeating itself here. 
Uh, it makes it very difficult in situations like this to even uh, discern of where the uh, traffic control devices are and uh, uh, what they're telling you to do with all the distractions that are taking place. And, of course, uh, everybody's familiar with uh, this example here. Some of the things that are taking place uh, in the future or are being tried, uh, here's an example of uh, where it actually has smoke coming out that ties in with the, uh, the billboard and uh, does a really nice effect there. Uh, but shows how uh, use of other types of uh, stimulus uh, can take place. Uh, and this is nothing new, really. Uh, some uh, municipalities have controlled this through regulation, uh, ordinances. Uh, I mean, I remember, I'm dating myself, but going all the way back to, uh, you know, Leave it to Beaver on TV, they uh, had uh, and show that uh, tied in with uh, this type of an effect. It's nothing new, but it can be used in new ways and uh, create novel effects, as uh, we talked about earlier. And, of course, you have mobile advertising, use of trucks, uh, wrapping around the entire truck for a digital uh, effect, uh, super graphics, or you can have uh, mobile digital billboards. Uh, built on the side of trucks, uh, just about any surface uh, can become uh, an outdoor uh, advertisement. Interactive uh, billboards. Remember when uh, a couple years ago, Minnie Cooper uh, had a situation where the uh, billboard could tell when you drove by. It could tell the, from the uh, key fob that you used with your vehicle. And if you uh, had registered uh, uh, with the company, that there would actually be a personal message that would come up on the, uh, the billboard outside as you drove by to get your attention. Uh, different area, areas around the world have uh, tried different things. Uh, you know, cell phone users agreeing to participate can receive phone calls from billboards offering additional product information or promotions. Uh, you know, drivers can text codes to a billboard to uh, uh, an indicated number on the billboard. And obviously you, know, you have uh, uh, text uh, messages, you have uh, website information, billboards. So a lot of that uh, creates interaction, but it also creates uh, more distraction, more time uh, that can distract the driver from their main purpose, which is obviously controlling uh, the vehicle. Regulations. It has uh, been regulations going all the way back to the uh, late 50s, early 60s, with the Federal uh, Aid Highway Act and the Highway Beautification Act. Uh, it's been constant uh, evolution and changes over the years to the point uh, where there's a wide diversity of the laws uh, out there depending on what state and uh, what uh, municipality uh, area, location that you're in. Four states currently ban billboards altogether, Alaska, Hawaii, Maine, and Vermont. Uh, two states have prohibited the construction of new billboards, and uh, some communities have chosen to cap the number of billboards that can be constructed. You know, the initial intent of the Highway Beautification Act was uh, – back in uh, Johnson's administration, was the erection and maintenance of outdoor advertising signs, displays, and devices in areas adjacent to the interstate system and the primary system should be controlled in order to protect the public investment in such highways to promote the safety and recreational value of public travel and to preserve natural beauty. Well, I think we can see over the last uh, 35, 40 uh, some years there's been a huge growth in the number of outdoor uh, advertising uh, taking place. The Outdoor Advertising Association of America has a code of uh, industry principles. Obviously, these are voluntary. Uh, one thing that they do not do, though, is it does not cover anything related to uh, safety impact studies prior to putting up uh, new billboards. Obviously, they are 
want to meet any regulations or standards uh, that are out there, uh, but relative to the actual impact that that uh, billboard can have from a human factor standpoint on driver distraction, uh, there's nothing that uh, is included in there that talks about um, the effects that a new billboard would have. Future considerations is obviously uh, a need for more research in several areas, uh, but at the same time, one of the things that, uh, and I talked about this just a little bit to uh, start, is that each situation needs to be looked at individually. Each collision, each time that there's a driver distraction uh, issue involved in a collision, whether it's a single car or multiple car, uh, it needs to be looked at individually. So. Uh, the amount of research and the type of research is good and informative, but at the same time, there's enough knowledge that, uh, about uh, distractions, driver distractions, internal, external, uh, that uh, additional research might shed light from a broad standpoint, but uh, each individual situation needs to be looked at on its own individual basis and merits. Well, this would be a good one to end on. Uh, this is a uh, billboard that says, please don't text and drive. Nothing is that important. So consequently, this billboard is distracting you to read about don't text and drive. And it's uh, sponsored by a funeral home. So I thought that would be a good one to end on. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Will. Uh, we do have a couple questions here in the queue. Um, we have one from Charlene who asked, um, well, do you know if there is any move on the part of uh, the Department of Commerce um, or any other uh, regulatory agency uh, to try to control the use of uh, digital outdoor advertising? Well, there's been, uh, you know, the Outdoor Advertising Association has come up with its own guidelines, uh, I believe. There's um, different, uh, you know, states and uh, municipalities uh, have their own guidelines. Um, there's a uh, study being uh, completed. It's supposed to be coming out uh, this month or last month, but uh, did not uh, get published, having to do with um, driver distraction and billboards. I don't know of anything um, you know, specific to the Department of, of Commerce about controlling billboards, because uh, it would all have to uh, somehow work with the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Department of Transportation, and areas that are already involved with, um, uh, you know, the highways themselves. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here um, that asks, why is there such little amount of data on the crashes and effects of billboards? Well, uh, again, uh, and I alluded to this earlier, having to do with uh, it's much more difficult to research as far as uh, the category, because of the sheer number of uh, variables that are involved, it's much harder to control, uh, as well as it uh, was not a, what, what we classify as a disruptive technology, meaning cell phones, when they came out and started to be used in cars, it's very easy to know the, uh, to uh, calculate and look at the data related to crashes and cell phone use. It's a little more difficult to look at evolutionary technology, such as what has occurred with billboards over the last, uh, you know, 80, 90 years. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we have a question here from Kristen who asks, um, there are some who say that a uh, larger sign um, is safer. Uh, what would you say about small digital signs that are 250 to 300 square feet? Uh, does size matter as far as um, human factors go uh, when trying to process the information on a billboard? Well, uh, in general, the larger the sign, the sooner that you can see it, uh, assuming that that space is used in a way that allows for larger fonts uh, and does not clutter uh, with some of the examples that I had shown earlier. So it's pretty hard to make a, a blanket statement relative to smaller versus larger depending on the context. You can have a situation on a, a rural highway that has a lot of turns and twists and up and down, and you could have a large billboard that um, because you're focused so much on the road in front of you with uh, staying within your lane that you, and if it's up in the air, you may not even notice that billboard at all, where if 
it was a smaller or lower billboard, it might be within your field of view as you're driving down the highway. The opposite could be true on an interstate system with a, a long straight section uh, where, uh, you know, large billboard you can see from a long distance away, and then you could have those multiple billboards. Obviously, those could be much easier to read. So, again, it's really hard to make a blanket statement about small versus large um, unless you're looking at the same ad and in the same type of situation. Okay. We have a uh, Charlene who asked a question uh, two questions ago, which is uh, seeking some clarification. Um, could you just repeat the entity that was going to issue the results of the study on driver distraction that you referred to in the answer? Yes, I believe that's the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Okay, excellent. The exact one. Excellent, thank you. Um, and here's another question for you, Will, and uh, please, to all the attendees out there, uh, please uh, keep the great questions coming in. How would you analyze the collision and the possible effects of, a near, of nearby billboards? Sure. Um, there, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, obviously, one is just talking with the, uh, the, the driver and seeing what uh, activities they were involved with. Now, you know, granted, uh, sometimes you may not get a, a direct answer when it comes to cell phones or texting, things like that, but even today you can get that information off their cell phone so you can know exactly uh, what they were doing at the time of the crash and uh, a lot of the... Um, Capability to do that, uh, law enforcement uh, has that power today. Um, so you look at that, you look at the time of the day, you look at uh, uh, traffic patterns that were taking place at that time of the day, where the other vehicles were, uh, an accident reconstruction of the uh, collision, looking at the placement of uh, external distractions, just as you do for the uh, internal distractions, where is the placement of the billboards? Uh, what's the placement of the billboards relative to uh, signing that might have been critical uh, due to the uh, what the driver was trying to do at the time of the collision. Uh, so you basically are taking and looking at uh, both issues involved with the driver from a physiological standpoint, and that's why they do blood tests, uh, you know, looking at uh, uh, the, how long they've been driving and fatigue. Then you look internal to the vehicle, but external to the driver, all those items that we talked about. And then you look external and try to see what factors uh, come into play uh, external to the vehicle also. And then you look at all those in combination and come up with uh, what are the, uh, the most likely contributing factors to the collision. Okay, great. Uh, towards the end of your presentation, will you touch briefly on uh, mobile advertising and interactive uh, billboards? Where do you see, what, what's kind of the next iteration of billboards? Uh, if, if you had a crystal ball, where, where are billboards going in the future, and how does that affect how, um, how drivers uh, may be distracted in the future? And maybe talk about some of the emerging technologies that are entering cars that may cause uh, driver distraction as well. Well, the, uh, you know, just like with uh, TV where you have the interaction, that's obviously a, a big area. Uh, of growth just to uh, get more involvement, either through text messaging, uh, going to the websites, uh, somehow being able to link the driver to that billboard through, uh, uh, you know, knowing the signal from the radio that they're listening to. There's all types of technology that uh, can uh, bring back to the advertiser to, to know the effectiveness of that ad itself. Um, so that can be done uh, through electronic means. Uh, you know, I, I'm not in the development area, uh, you know, so it, it's a little bit of a reach. But being involved with technology and development and commercialization of technology over the last 30 years uh, and looking at what's taking place in advertising, that being able to get beyond just the number of eyeballs that are driving by each day and getting down to what are those eyeballs and are they really looking at the ad uh, and responding to that ad, no different than what Google tries to do online uh, with the uh, ads and knowing exactly uh, what you're doing or through Facebook. Um, I would expect that that would continue only in an outdoor advertising arena also. Okay, great. I don't – I we have one question here from Brian who asks, um, Will, do you happen to know what the industry standard size for a digital billboard is? 
or are there are, are there various sizes that the industry tends to use? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head exactly what those sizes are. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions in the queue. So, Will, if you have some uh, some uh, final uh, final remarks that you would like to make, please feel free to, uh, to give a brief summary. Uh, just once again, uh, thank everybody for their time. I appreciate the opportunity and hope that it's shed just a little bit of light. It might have raised a lot of questions uh, that maybe you haven't thought of. Uh, be glad that, uh, you know, if you want the audio, I think uh, Matt mentioned that that will be downloadable. If you'd like a copy of the actual presentation itself, uh, email me. I think Matt uh, uh, can forward those to me, or uh, you can get the email address from him, and we'll be glad to uh, send out the copy of the PowerPoint presentation uh, directly to you, too. Okay, well, thank you very much, Will. It was a great presentation. Um, I think it shows you put a lot of time and effort into it. So thank you so much for, for all the work that you did put into this presentation. And thank you uh, to those who took time out of their day uh, to spend with us. Um, I'm just going to wrap things up very briefly here. Um, as I said, or as Will mentioned, uh, we will be sending out a link to the archive recording of this webinar uh, tomorrow morning. And in that email, we will be... Uh, putting uh, Will's email address so that you can uh, get the PowerPoint presentation uh, from him and his team at Hematech. Uh, if you'd like to speak to Will about a particular case or project, uh, please contact us here at TASA. Our telephone number is 800-523-2319, or you can email me at mhide at tassanet.com. You will be getting an automated email from me at 3.30 p.m. just thanking you for attending uh, with some other follow-up information, and you can just reply to that, and I'll, uh, I'll try to answer your question as quickly as possible. Um, if you have any follow-up questions or comments, as I said, you can email me at mi.fastenet.com. We do take all the comments that we receive under consideration, and they do help us to put on uh, better programs, so please do take time and, uh, and give us feedback. With that said, uh, please, please take a moment and uh, complete the feedback survey that will appear on your screen after you leave the meeting. Um, other than that, I think we're good. I, again, Will, thank you for your time and your effort. Thank you to everyone who was in attendance. I'm now going to end the meeting, and I look forward to seeing everybody at future past events. Thank you so much.